In spite of some brilliant individual play and their recent success in the NCAA tournament, gopher hockey in the early 1970s had fallen on hard times. With professional teams in both Bloomington and St. Paul, the Gophers were no longer the only game in town. When the competition combined with a last place finish in 1972, interest in the program cooled considerably. But the flame was quickly rekindled by a firebrand coach from the east side of St. Paul. Hey Stan, this is a basketball game now, come on! Get in that thing! I always believed that the Billies, the, the players I had in Minnesota, they had everything was inside. It was a matter of, for me as a coach, is to give them an environment so we can come out. If the hockey surge of the 1950s was fueled by a fleet of all-stars, its resurgence two decades later was forged by some noted overachievers, talented players who maximized their potential. These young men had much in common, not the least of which was their birthplace. They were all Americans and all Minnesotans, a group of individuals who succeeded as one. You build a team with a different set of uh, you know, bricks. Uh, and I think there's an old saying, there's hewers of wood and carriers of water. <laughs> the roles were accepted. There wasn't any question when he said, all right, this is your job. You just did it. And it was, hey, if I'm going to be a penalty killer, I'm going to be the best penalty killer in the country. I'm going to take pride in that. The team Brooks inherited included junior goaltender Brad Shellstad, eventual All-Americans Les Auger and Mike Folich, and the brothers Harris, Robbie and John. His first captain was senior Bill Butters, a tough guy whose legend grew from a brawl against Colorado College. His teammates eventually joined in, but not before Butters took on CC all by himself. As I got closer, to their bench, the, the referees were escorting me off and they said, are you okay, are you okay? And I said, yeah, yeah. And their players were taunting me and using some pretty pointed words and they were gonna do some stuff to me and rip my head off. So I figured, well, I might as well get three or four of them, you know, before they get me. So I broke free of the referee and cross body blocked about four or five of the guys and they started beating me up and the police grabbed me by the skates and dragged me off. And then our bench came over and it was, it was quite the scene, and it was probably a low light in gopher hockey, but a lot of people remember it. From the basement, Herbie's Gophers took an immediate stride to the middle of the pack. Then one year later, climbed all the way to the national championship. It kind of took the whole Twin Cities and our team as much by surprise as anything else. Not so much that we won, I think, but the, the fact that we got in position to win. The victory that put the Gophers on the threshold came in dramatic fashion at venerable Boston Garden against favored BU in the semifinals of the NCAA playoffs. We were ahead in the game. I think we were ahead quite, you know, three to nothing, something like that. But then the momentum really switched, and before you know it, it was a tie game. And with about uh, less than two minutes to go in the third period of reg you know, regulation play, um, we ended up taking a penalty given by a Boston referee naturally, you know. And so he was in the box and we had to kill this crazy penalty off. I went out to challenge the guy at the point that was gonna take a shot. And uh, he, instead of taking the shot, was gonna pass it across to his defenseman and intercepted the pass. And ended up on a, on a kind of like a two on one. So everybody in the building thought Folger was gonna pass and he drilled a long one, he saw the goal, he moved and he hit, you know, scored in the short side. I remember looking up at the clock and said it had the unlucky number, which was lucky for me. It was 13 seconds remaining in regulation play. One night later, the Gophers defeated Michigan Tech 4-2, and just 24 months from the cellar, Minnesota was the national champion. Now that probably was probably the most satisfying coaching period that I've ever had in my life. 